to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. Thank you for joining us once again for another wonderful installment. We have some familiar, well, at least one familiar folk. That is to my right, Chris Millett. Welcome back. Thank you, Nick. Good to be here. Who do we got to your right? We got my friend David Demersion. David, welcome to Face the Facts. Thank you. It's an honor to be here on the show with you guys. It's an honor to have you. <laughs> Why don't we kick it off into wonderful gear with the New England Patriots? The Patriots had a great victory against the Baltimore Ravens from the past Sunday. It was one of those games where both teams pretty much hate each other and they want to play their hardest during the game. Some people coming into the game thought that it could have gone the Ravens' way and they could have been victorious. So open up the discussion and see where you guys were thinking before the game. And Nick, you're right. It certainly almost did go the Ravens' way. You see, you saw a lot of special teams mishaps by uh, the Patriots and just kind of a lack of focus in the third, fourth quarter um, caused the Ravens to get back in the game. This is a game that the Patriots should have absolutely put away in the start of the fourth. Bill Belichick and Matt Patricia usually never let up. Um, but you saw some, some extreme special teams mishaps that led to um, a potential Ravens victory. And this isn't to discount uh, how well the Patriots did play. Um, they blocked Justin Tucker's first field goal uh, attempt all season. Justin Tucker for the Baltimore Ravens had kicked perfectly. Is he the best kicker in the NFL? Uh, Statistically-wise, yes. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Professor? <laughs> uh, honestly, I thought that this was a very uh, intense game. You could see Brady in a it state was very that intense at my house. we, yes, I we know. have not <laughs> seen Brady in a while. Very uh, a little frustrated there in the, the first yeah. half of the game. And, uh, but I think that Brady being Brady, he made it happen, and all that counts is that they pulled it out in the end. So That's a good point, how Brady was visibly frustrated with Edelman, especially. Edelman, your top receiver, you've been throwing to him for years, and you're getting on his case on the sideline, they, they zoomed right in on They were replaying, replaying. He's just in his grill. Why didn't you catch that? Why didn't you catch that? You're running the routes wrong. And for Brady to step up and tell uh, his man that, that, that says was a lot. Was he frustrated or was he extremely motivated? I mean, frustration comes from a little bit of motivation mm -hmm. uh, and the motivation to do well. So to say that Tom Brady was not motivated would to be you just don't and know. I don't Tom want Brady to give Julian Edelman a free ride here by any means, but he does deserve a butt. Just so you know, he had a kid this past week. Yes. Oops. I mean, yes, his mind may have been in a slightly different place than uh, at Gillette Stadium. However, um, and some missed practices along uh, in the week can certainly add to that, but. I think when Tom Brady's in your grill, yeah. multiple points uh, throughout the entire game, mm -hmm. that goes a long way. And practice should be interesting this week to see in the press conferences what they might ask Brady, what they might ask Edelman, or how that interaction and personality and friendship has, has gone thus far. Were you going to say something? Uh, no, you can continue. <laughs> <laughs> Chris pretty much. Yeah, Chris pretty much. Chris, Chris kind of got carried away on that point. <laughs> no, bit. it's fine. We all, we all like to say our things. But I want to say practice should be interesting this week for the Patriots because Edelman's role here, yes, he always has been a trusted receiver for Brady, is uh, hitting the enormous plate. Mm. That means he has to take over kind of the Gronk right safety blanket in a way and i think maybe edelman's so, got to be better than he is maybe some of that frustration from brady came from not having gronk in the game on uh on monday night could have and maybe he's just frustrated with how the game plan went early in the week there's a number of factors of why uh he could have been frustrated well, let's look at the ravens here for a second because this is the team back in 2014 when the patriots won their super bowl and all this was the organization that started the whole deflate gate nonsense and John Harbaugh, Harbaugh had a uh, pouting match after the game because he was all mm. upset because Belichick and the Patriots ran that. What was that special play they ran with Edelman? Edelman to Amendola, remember? Just kind of like a, a, oh, a screen, screen, screen pass, Some if you want to call it. Some screen pass everything. Double remember pass? after the game, Tom Brady told John Harbaugh to go read the rule book? Mm. There's some bad blood between yeah. these two teams. They don't like each other at all. They can say whatever they want. It was just another game. This one meant something to the Patriots. It was personal. Right. It was personal. It was like Ter Terrell Suggs, uh, a lineman for... You mean Terrell Thug? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted, to, just wanted to clarify. The second half of my sentence, the guy is a thug. Yeah. He 
has blatantly said in the past how every game he plays against Tom Brady, it's his mission to basically injure him sure. and take out his knees. Um, to have a player like that go after Brady, first of all, they did a terrible job of blocking Terrell Suggs all game, especially in the first quarter and second. So if you're not going to game plan against a personal attacker against Brady, then they kind of deserve that little yeah. awakening in the second half to say, you guys need to do a better job. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna say, Dave? Yeah, I think uh, the the difference between uh, the Ravens and you know any of the other teams um, is that they they really didn't give up until the last uh, blow of the whistle there, and I think that that shows that um, you know this is a really special team that the Patriots were playing, and that the fact that it was in the uh, the home of the Patriots made it even more uh, inspiring to to win this game at home. Mm-hmm. What does two and two mean to you? Two that's what the rec- two wins. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what the Ravens' record was going into Gillette Stadium that's a with, Har- with Harbaugh matchup. as coach. That's a very that even shows matchup. me that the Ravens are not afraid coming into Gillette to give it their all and prevail mm. against the Patriots. So that's something that, as an opponent going into Gillette, usually you are scared. You're feared that you might go home with the loss. Not so much with the Ravens. This game, though, should never have been close. Let's right. just put it that way. Right. Let's hit the point where it needs to go first. Cyrus Jones. What in the world is he still doing on punt returns, kickoffs, all that nonsense? It almost happened in the first half, too, and I was surprised it didn't. Um, when that happened, it, that, that, that's a high school mistake, mm-hmm. honestly, that you see high school kids do that. Mm-hmm. Never in college, never in the per, never in the pros. Yeah, you're gonna let that hit you. Either get the heck out of the way, or just fair catch the ball. Just catch the ball. Take an eight. Yeah, take an eight. Don't don't stare at it and let it hit your leg. Yeah, that's all what uh, that's all what uh, Coach Belichick preaches. It's just do your job. And I think it was obvious that Jones just. Why is he it. struggling so much? Cyrus Jones. Yes. Maybe it's the playing time. Okay. Maybe he wants to be on D. Maybe he wants to be out there on a... From yeah. all the reports that we Maybe hear, he wants to be traded. I don't know. Elite, oh, yeah, he's really working up that trade value. That's yeah. really going up. Um, I'm sure everybody in the league wants a Probably be return on practice specialist squad. that yeah. fumbles yeah. the ball every time. Yeah. That's high on my Christmas list. Now, <laughs> let's look at the facts here. One of the facts here is this is a first-round draft pick. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. This is face the facts. Let's look at the facts. First-round draft pick, number one, Cyrus Jones. Fact number two, this guy is from Alabama. That's Nick Saban. That's, uh, that's one of the po- coaches that Belichick has always kind of got a lot of his players from. They have a really good relationship there. So I'm sure that Belichick does not want to have to cut a first-round pick, number one, and have that disappointment of Alabama think, and that connection. I don't think. Picking up that phone call and saying, like, hey, Nick, yo, you, this is the player that we have no, here. I mean, it's trash. Not everyone's going to work out that you get, Nick. So I don't think if he sees someone that's being detrimental to his own squad, he's not going to let his ego and Nick Saban's ego get in the way. If he's not doing his egos. job, if he's not doing his job, he's out. Mm-hmm. Back on practice squad or ship him away. I don't know what to say, honestly. I think that. Um, you know, if, if Bill Belichick thinks that he's not going to be a key part of their team, then, you know, what even is the point of having a guy that's going to make sloppy mistakes like that? Were you surprised that he was put back out there after that fumble? Well, where was, like, Edelman? Why is he not taking it? The reason that I think they don't want to put Edelman out there is because he already has to expand his role with Gronk being out. I think that's plain and simple. However. Is it just they don't want him to get hurt? That, I, honestly, I feel like they were throwing Jones out there to see, oh, like, I kind of, not. I hope he gets hurt. And they were but giving him a hurt, safety blanket. That's why they put, they put Dion Lewis there. and yeah. they put, um, what's his name? The guy, uh, uh, Matthew Slater, Slater yeah. who also fumbled the ball as well. That's just stuff that cannot happen. Um, what they do going from this point, they got to put Edelman there. They have to. Mm. Let's put it this way. Danny Amendola is not back there because he's hurt. He's got the high ankle sprain. Put Mitchell back there or even, uh, who is it, um, McCourty. Might have to. And I'm sure they're trying to work that out at practice now on what is the best solution to have to fix this ongoing problem that's been returning a football, catching a football. Mm. It's one it's one oh one. Mitchell or McCordy, there's a lot of names that come to mind, but certainly not uh, Jones. 
Now, the one thing that I do like with Edelman being back there is trust. I trust Edelman mm -hmm. the most out of that group. Let's look back a year ago when the Patriots had a guy named, you may remember, you may not, Chris Harper. Hmm. He was taken on the Harper Valley PTA bus out of here as soon as the season was done. That right there was one of the reasons why the Patriots lost that game against Denver, if you don't remember that. I don't. That was the key on how the domino effect went for the Patriots. They went downhill from the Harper. He fumbled the ball, mm. dropped it, and Denver was able to recover, and they scored their touchdown there. Well, I mean, maybe it's just a reminder to all NFL teams and all teams in general that... Put your best out there. And, and spend time on special teams. Special teams can win you games and lose you games. I, I, why, I just think it's baffling to me why they're working with, oh, let's put DR, let's put, make it consistent. Put your best guy yeah. out there. Put Edelman there. Even if, he's just, even if he's just out there for the special teams play, you don't need a wide receiver or no. a safety that plays every down on defense or offense. I completely Just have agree. a specialist. Yeah. And you might see that coming up in college, uh, more specialists, just mm -hmm. kickoff return specialists and punt return specialists mm -hmm. that only handle the duties for punts and kickoffs. Yeah, but I, I think that what the Patriots are really concerned about is injuries, injuries, injuries. They have had some key players injured um, even at the beginning of the season with, with Brady. Um, or not Brady, he was suspended. Um, you know, Garoppolo. And then, you know, Hogan last night, he ran off the field in his hand and he's complaining about his hands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I could see why they might put someone, they might not put someone so special back there, but... You know, you got to think. Are you going to? They're all special to, in to their own right, right. Are you are you willing to risk it, or are you willing to? You know, even if it is a risk or not. But I think Edelman would do the Patriots a big deal right. of work back there. You don't you don't just put someone who's subpar, just in the hopes that like, oh, I think someone might get injured back there tonight, so let's just put someone subpar back there. You, you're there to win a football game. Yeah, you are. There and they know they're game. getting paid injuries to, happen. They're getting paid to take hits. They're getting paid to potentially get injured. They're professionals. Let them go out there and do what they're best at. I love the competitiveness of the game. Mm. I know we talked about the rivalry and everything, mm -hmm. but I thought particularly Tom Brady took his competitiveness, yeah. and even some of the oh, other yeah. guys on the team took it to another level. Tom Brady, 39 years old, looked like in the game playing. He yeah. was playing his first game as an NFL guy. Almost like back in Michigan. Riding, riding high, trying his best to win this game. Right. He's been playing for since 2011, uh, right. 2001 here. Why does it continue to not get old for Tom Brady? Because he's young. He's, he says this, that this is the best he's ever felt in his entire mm -hmm. career. Correct. He's got new eating habits, new workout habits, kind of this new mindset he's been we taking on. We all want to be Tom Brady. We do. Yeah. I'd love to be him. Yeah. Why not? I think we could expect to see a lot more coming from Tom Brady, especially uh, yardage-wise, and I think that he's not getting – He's not getting any worse. I think, if anything, he's getting better. And honestly, I might pose this question. Do you think that Tom Brady potentially could be retiring at the end of this season or next and is trying to put up some of his best numbers in his final season, like we saw David Ortiz no. put up his best numbers, some of his best numbers in his final season? Is this you, kind of like you, you would the be end? Hint. You would be hinted. You would get some sort of a hint like, oh, I think I'm going to be wrapping up soon. There's no hint. He said he wanted to play till he was 45. I believe him 100%. Come I on. believe Everyone him. Everyone says that they want to play for ages, but it gets to a point where I th that's why they're keeping Garoppolo. That's it's why not going to be his decision, out. Chris. Remember that. Right. It's not. Correct. It's Giselle's. Yeah, we know that. The, the breadwinner in his family. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. But, I mean, that's she, why. She comes a-calling, he'll go a-running. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they have not shipped out Jimmy Garoppolo, though. Yeah. They know that his time, honestly. I love how it, you brought that soon, point up. I love how you brought the Garoppolo point up. Go ahead. They say that Garoppolo, I heard in the news this week, oh, he might be traded to the Browns. Absolutely not. No. Never. What are you going to get, a second-round pick from, like, the Rams that's been traded around the Browns organization thousands of times? That's an organization that should be blown up. But that's for another show. <laughs> <laughs> but, Tell us how you really feel. No. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Cleveland. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo is staying and will be the quarterback for the New England Patriots for the next 15, Ooh. Ooh. 18 years after, after Tom Brady is done. And I, that love, year, I love this show. Tom Brady, will, Tom Brady will be done this year if he wins the Super Bowl. 
He will retire. I think he will go out oh, if he wins a Super Bowl. Just I, like David Ortiz is coming back, folks. <laughs> Nick said. I always love bringing that point up when you're on here. Nick said that David Ortiz. That's David don't, Ortiz is don't not. Don't believe a word he says. David Ignore Ortiz him. is retired. Don't believe him. Ah. <laughs> okay. A. David Ortiz has retired for good. He's is, done. Will never play baseball again. <laughs> Two. Jimmy Garoppolo Jeez. will be the starting quarterback. Rip my heart out now. C. Tom Brady will retire at the end of this year if he wins the Super Bowl. Oof. Or if he doesn't, next year will be his last. You heard me say this is, this is why I love Face the Facts. Because I'll be everybody is entitled to their own opinion. That's your opinion. I can have a different opinion. David can have Yeah, his. well, back, back to what Nick said about... Okay, go ahead. You know, back to what you said. You know, I don't think he's going to be done by the end of this year if he wins. Look at... You see how competitive he was last game? I think that we're going to slowly see his competitive side go down as if uh, that's going to be our hint. I think someone's competitive side ramps up. You see in high school sports all the time, freshman, junior, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, it means more to you when you get near the end. That's what I think. I mean, like games become, the games become your last and they become that more special to you. So, so that's instance, why I think he's, he's playing his best. For instance, yes. you, you just talk about how competitiveness gets towards the end. So I'm going to reference my bowling league that I was in last <laughs> night. I was super into it at the end, and I really had it coming and going. And I just f fought through it and had my best night yet. So is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just have to reference You're that. You're near the end, Nick. You've near the end yeah, for a yeah, long I've time. I've been near the end for a while. I think that Garoppolo will be playing elsewhere in his career. Now, that's my side of the thing. I'm glad but you brought the point up with him. The... Because I don't think Tom Brady is going to retire until he is 45. He Six, is that's... amazing on what he is able to do. I'm not denying that. David Ortiz was amazing this year for the for Red Sox. Why did he retire? Because he kept on saying, oh, man, my, my feet. I just don't know how long I can do this. Oh, I think I'm tired. He's, because he's, he's honest. He's given us – so is Tom Brady. Tom Brady's been honest. He said 45. I'm going to take him for his word. No way. I'm going to believe no, no. I'm gonna believe that until I see otherwise. You don't think his ego might be getting to him slightly? No. No, I don't. I think Tom Brady truthfully feels and believes that he wants to play till he's 45. He loves winning Super Bowls and being out there on the field. Who doesn't? It, 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 Me, but... How many, <laughs> how many backup quarterbacks do the Patriots have to go through until they say, okay, this is our guy? The and next when Patriots does... quarterback is probably playing high school football right now. I... Okay. Okay. I think, I think Jimmy G is going to be... I think he's going to be a huge part of their, their offense in, in the next years to come. As we've seen how Belichick mm -hmm. crafts these players and how he's, he's a coach like no other. And I think that yeah. it's, it's honestly a blessing to have him on the team because you know, he's, he's a scrambler. I mean, he's someone who gets out. He's yeah. someone who's good at running uh, to get to the first down off of eight yards or and something like that. And he sees the field unbelievably. I don't want to knock Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't. You don't, but Nick, you don't draft an Eastern Illinois quarterback just to trade him around the NFL. It just doesn't happen like that. But he's not ready. The pay, oh, he Garoppolo's is getting, ready. Garoppolo's he saw getting two the games, experience. Chris. He proved himself. Two games. Did you see anything in those two games that you said? And then we saw his, wimpyitis over, not oh be able to play God. in the other two. We have to hate, see. We got. You're we not going to see him in a full season. Brissett play this year. Yeah. That wasn't even on the radar. Okay, well, it wasn't on the radar that this suspension would get reinstated this yep. year. So, I mean, there's nothing that you can predict in the NFL with Goodell, a.k.a. something else that we can't say on the show. But, I mean, Jimmy G will be their quarterback. Either next year, if the Pats win the Super Bowl. It's his time, What's Nick. today's date? Today's date is the 14th, the 14th 12, 14, of December. 16. Chris says... <laughs> Jimmy G, next year? If the Pats win the Super Bowl. You take it to the next year? That's You are You laugh as it's something What did you have before you, you came on the show okay. tonight? The MSG is kicking in? Time out. Hold something up, something to Mickey out. D's? <laughs> Would you rather win a Super Bowl this year and lose Tom Brady next year and have him retire yeah. or lose in the playoffs this year Lose in the playoffs next year and not win another Super Bowl uh, in the rest of Tom Brady's era. There's a question. Well, I think a lot of people think that 
the longer he stays, look at look at how good they are this year. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to translate over into next year with the the crew they have on offense. I think that you look at that and you see, okay, they're good this year. Oh, they're probably going to be good next year, the I year know, after that. I know we talked about Gronk trades and everything, the question mark. What if a piece like that goes? What if the Patriots see their organization See, I personally think like I that. personally think that Tom Brady is here longer than Gronk's going to be. Gronk's almost done with the Patriots. Yeah, I agree on that point. Woohoo! No, no, <laughs> but how, I just I, I don't know. I personally I think it's it'd be very hard for me to wrap my head around something else playing out, other than that. But I think honestly I would rather win a Super Bowl this year, lose Tom Brady, and have him retire, after winning a Super Bowl, going out on that high note, remembering Tom Brady for who he is, mm-hmm. as a Super Bowl champion, yeah. and have Jimmy Dre be the face of our organization for the years to come. You you wouldn't. I, I rather, just I, I I can't believe Tom Brady's going to be going in the next three years. I'm okay, sorry. I understand I that it's maybe I can understand it's sentimental and might break your heart. However, it already has. <laughs> you, you rip my heart out right now. So, however, I w- you wouldn't take a Super Bowl championship for New England over Tom Brady. No, I wouldn't. I want Tom Brady. He's got so many years left in Even him. Even if you lost in the playoff. Is it? Hold on. I is it, absolutely on. idolize Tom Brady. Is it, I idolize him. Isn't the, I know he is the goat, but isn't the goal of all sports to win a championship? Of course it is. So why wouldn't you want to achieve your goal at the expense because of maybe a player? I would. Who is near the end? I don't think they can do that with Jimmy G. You see, if you retire, if Brady retires, then I think, you know, he doesn't it's have as much experience. Experience, so I think Jimmy G is going to be left with a, a, a huge plateful of options that yeah. maybe he might not even have the experience to work with. Yeah, he might. Not, that's a fair point. He might not be able to handle it. Like we saw two games from him. That's it. That's it. Okay, Nick. We need to see more. Nick, Nick, you're gonna see Let more. Let him play for the Browns. But no, God no. Get, that that organization. I could do a show on that organization, <laughs> and go through their entire. I, okay, I'm not gonna. Jimmy G. <laughs> I'll take their first pick in the draft. No. For who, though? Whoever it is. It's not going to be the Browns pick. It's going to be the Pats pick. Oh, you if mean... you trade Jimmy Garoppolo and you get... If, You're not going to be the get worst team the in the NFL one this pick. year. You, you get the number one pick for Jimmy G? Eat that up. I'll take that 100% of the time. I disagree. I disagree. Oh, I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> the Browns any... are notorious for just... I would hate to see You're not going to take the I would pick. Hate to, You're I not going to allow the Browns to pick that pick. The Patriots will pick that pick. Right. However, but I just think that I would. You want a stud would, quarterback? Would, Here you go, Cleveland. It would pain Jimmy me. G. It would pain me to see more Jimmy G failing in Cleveland than it would be to see that trade happen. I think that's more. I want to see Jimmy Garoppolo excel wherever he lands up, ends up. And I would hate to see him land in Cleveland. He is in New England. I can't see him other. I can't see him in any other uniform other than New England. What about who, Denver? Who? No, God, no. no. They need a quarterback. Not going to be him. Not any team in the NFL, you think? I just said, I don't see. I think they will see how this season plays out, where the holes lie in the, in the league for quarterback next mm-hmm. season, and then they'll evaluate it, and then we'll do a show what when What a fascinating that comes. debate this was. Really, if you didn't get a chance to really go back and watch it, I suggest you rewind it, press the little back button on YouTube, <laughs> recirculate it again. That was one of the best debates we've had in a while. I love having different sides of things. You know, I, you're great. I, just, I, I thought it was great. Sometimes we do these things a little scripted sometimes, and we try and tell somebody to have a different side of an opinion. You're going to have to figure out, was that scripted or was that live? <laughs> it's up to you to figure that one out. Anything I come from the want? heart. Yeah. All I come from Reading. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do you have anything else? You well, want yeah, to yeah. Add? Back to your point about um, you know the the trade or not. If well, you look at Brady. Okay, he's had a phenomenal run with the Patriots, which has made him the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. And I think you look at Belichick too. You look at him, and he's not like a lot of the coaches we see in the NFL. Actually, he's one of his own. Mm-hmm. And I think if you take that coaching style. And if you take a very uh, huge prospect, I think, okay, we only saw him two games, but in those two games, I think he did very well. Oh, I'm not going to discount that. I thought but he did. I think that was because of Bill Belichick. And I think I, if you can keep, that's a fair point, if yeah. you can keep 
training him, and he, he can learn from the best. Yeah. He has Brady. I think that's why he's stuck, stuck around thus far. Yeah, I agree. So, I get, so I, here's another question. Do Brady and Belichick go out on the same year, on the same No, end? no, no. Brady will be gone before Belichick, and that's very bold of me to say that, but he wants to win something without Brady. Really? That I will tell you that I, that I strongly feel that. So you think his ego might get to him a little bit more, and his they both have they, their own egos, right? But I mean, I, don't know. I do know something though. You an insider? We're on. To, <laughs> we're on to the Broncos. Speaking of which, <laughs> that's the whole famous Belichick thing. You're supposed to yeah. laugh after that. That was a good segue. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> I think the Broncos will match up against the Patriots this upcoming Sunday. You You're concerned fine. about it? What are your What are your thoughts, guys? You only have to game plan against Von Miller. Honestly, Von Miller is one of the best linebackers, defensive end, whatever you want to call him, lineman. Lines up in all of these different formations for the Broncos. Mm-hmm. You game plan against him. You shut him down. The Patriots will have no problem uh, facing up against them. It's just okay. another week. Okay, Mister Confident. <laughs> uh, I you know I, I agree point. to some parts of that. I think that the Broncos have a somewhat scrappy offense, if you would call it. I think that. They, um, you know, they have, they have potential, but I think it's going to be a low-scoring game on, on them. Um, you know, I think with uh, their quarterback and, and now, uh, you know, Manning gone, I think that the Patriots' defense is going to have to come up huge, uh, and I think that they're going to do very well. Let's not discount this point. They are at Denver. They're at mile high. Yeah. That, I mean, is that is always a been that is a, factor being a tough mile. place. Yeah. For the Patriots to win a game, my question here is: Does that impact the game for Sunday? Of course, whenever you're away, it impacts it to a degree. However, you've seen Bill Belichick in practice, wherever they are playing, adjust the temperature in uh, the training facility in the bubble in Foxborough to the temperature of what it might be. Adjust like the bubble air, temp. Yeah, adjust the yeah. air pressure or air degree. I'm not sure. I'm not a physicist or Scientologist, whatever you want to we call it. We were about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the extent, but he trains his players to play in the conditions all week of what the conditions will be on Sunday. Okay. Well, I don't think it will affect them Professor that much. Professor David. Away. Meteorologist David Demersian. <laughs> well, for the face to facts weather report. Uh, well, you know, honestly, I think that. It'll be sunny in the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think back to what you're talking about. I think you know. Okay, well, weather is weather, and I think that's the least of Belichick's problems. I think all it has to come down to. I've said it twice. Just do your job. We can't have stupid uh, returns where yeah. people are hitting it off their foot, and we can't have fumbles, and we can't. We need to limit the mistakes on offense, and I think that's going to be a huge key to them winning the game. The other games upcoming, Christmas Eve, that is the New York Jets. The next week, that's New Year's Eve Day, that'll be Miami. That's crazy how they're going to play on Christmas Eve. Make, makes the holidays a little bit yeah, a little more, more fun exciting. if you think about it. You can actually start your parties at 1 o'clock versus uh, <laughs> 4 or 5 o'clock at night. My question here is, Broncos, Jets, Miami. Does that concern you with anything? What do you think will happen with the record? How will they go? Will they sweep it? Will they lose something? What do you think? David, we'll start with you first. You have that, hmm, I have a thought. Well, I say they they beat Broncos. Okay. They beat Jets. And Miami's always always a very, yeah. it's always a very uh, aggressive, aggressive game. And I think... You know, especially wrapping up to the, towards the end of the season, I think the Patriots are going to also go in like, you know, we need momentum to go in, um, even though they do have the, the first round um, by here. But, uh, you know, I think it's going to be close at the end of the season. Yeah, I think 3-0 and is a little too optimistic. I know I've been very opinionated all night. So I'll <laughs> yeah, refrain thanks. on this point. Um, they'll probably go 2-1. and one. Finish out the regular season. Ooh. I don't. I don't like going into the playoffs on a, too much of a high note. But you always, you always want to peak at your end of the season um, to have momentum going into the playoffs. Yep. Um, I think three and I was a little too optimistic. I don't like just how the Patriots are structured right now. Them going three and zero, 
um, for the rest of the season. They'll go two and one, like Dave said. I agree with uh, you on that point. Um, and then I think you're going to see something very special happen in December and January uh, in the playoffs. I don't want to toot my own horn, but <laughs> I feel they're going to go three and zero. Let me hear you. I'm going to tell you why. Last season, the Patriots should have had home field advantage yep. at Gillette. Yep. They should have had to gone to Denver to play that playoff game. We know the story. 2018, they lost. This time, I think there's a little bit of an extra motivation here. And you saw that a little bit from the Ravens. The Ravens weren't super great this year, but the Patriots treated the Ravens like they were Super Bowl caliber. Just the way the performance was yeah. from a unit. I thought yeah. it was their... Overall, as a team, they're best outside of special teams. Yeah. Defense played great. Offense was clicking. Running game, moving well. What I think you're going to see here is I don't see Denver being much of a, a, a threat to the Patriots. Denver's not as good this year. Just not. Quarterback struggled. Defense has been a little bit banged up. They have no running game whatsoever. So that'll eliminate that. The next thing you want to look at is the Jets, who are in a... Mm -hmm. Almost as bad as the Browns <laughs> category. Not as bad, but they're, mm -hmm. they're, pretty, they're pretty miserable. The toughest game is going to be Miami because typically the Patriots rest up their starters, yep. get ready for the playoffs that week. Belichick's not allowing that this year. Right. They are going to get that win against Miami at the end right. of the season too. That's why I'm counting this 3-0. and It is a great thing in my eyes to go into the playoffs on a high note, feeling good about yourselves. Mm -hmm. Having that confidence and swagger. Exactly. So whoever you face, if you get that bye. Bring it on. It's probably going to be Kansas City, and it could also be Oakland. That if moves me to my next point. If it's Oakland. What do you like? God bless. Uh, I like Kansas City a lot better than Oakland. I mean. You like Kansas City better. Yeah. If to face. I mean, if we face Oakland, that's a little bit of a tougher of a challenger. I am nervous if they do not get home field advantage, which is why I think they're going to put the pedal to the metal. Yep. I do not want to see them go to Arrowhead. Yep. That's Kansas City. Tough place to play. Also Oakland, too. Don't and Oakland yeah. is a pit. Yeah. Just keep it nice. We'll keep it PG. Uh, I can the... use some choice words, but I don't really want to have to put this show at 12 a.m. in the morning <laughs> here in North Reading, so we'll just call it the pit. Okay. My overall thought is staying at home is so important, and that's something that, in my opinion... I think, needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Go to your side. Kansas City is a lot, I don't want to say easier. Maybe a, is Kansas City a softer point, opponent than the Raiders? I would say just... No, they're harder. No, I don't know. We disagree a lot. Mm. Yeah, I'd actually like to ask you guys, what, what makes Oakland such, such a threat? I know their, their record is great, but, you know, what... What do the Patriots need to be concerned about? I think it's Derek Carr. I don't think it's so much Derek Carr. I, I would be afraid of Devontae Mack. That player on defense has been outstanding for them. The, the Oakland Raiders have a little bit of that cockiness towards yeah. them. Mm -hmm. with they, they feel like they've been there before, which they haven't. They've got the swagger that you're talking about. They, they have the swag. Yeah. They feel like... Oh, we're Oakland Raiders. We're going to come in and we're going to mess you up kind of thing. Yep. The Oakland Raiders have always had that, again, back to the Terrell Suggs reference, that little thug-like to mm -hmm. them. They're going to beat up on the fans inside of there. Have you seen that stuff that Barstool put out? <laughs> no. Got the Oakland Raider fans rumbling with the... Uh, <laughs> oh, falling down the stairs. Yeah, stand. they were falling that. down yeah. the stairs. It's just a mess. That's crazy. That fans... Though that's not just a train wreck worse and a half than, Worse there. than the Bills Mafia. Oh, my God. It's just bad. <laughs> I don't want to see that the Patriots fans have yeah. to suffer and go over there because they'll probably get beaten up because mm -hmm. of Tom Brady <laughs> and all of his loveliness. Hopefully so that's not. just not a good match there. I would love to see them face Kansas City. Kansas City at home, I see the Patriots just being able to be fine with. Yeah. At Arrowhead, I think it's a little different. It's been a tough place to play. It's a loud place to play. Uh, Kansas City has one of the better teams in the NFL right now, and that's something that you can't discount. Just my side of it. Um, looking at the playoff front, let's say the Patriots do win, whether it's against Kansas City or against it's Oakland. Are they going to the Super Bowl? Yes, they're going to win course. it. I okay. think so. You think they're going to win it? Now, who's the matchup going to be? We haven't talked about the NFC. <sighs> what, are our, what are our... 
Could be the Giants, which I don't want. I'm done no with the way. Giants. Oh, forget that. No way. Yeah. I'll be done with the Giants. I'm not going to say that they're easier anymore. They you have us that by in here. Cow- Anything. Oh, Cow- See, Cowboys. The- Cowboys versus Patriots would be a very interesting matchup. Patriots would win. Your reasoning? Because of experience? Experience will factor in this big time. Yeah. Dak Prescott is the most overrated thing I've seen ever. Wow. Overrated. Win a Super Bowl. Win a playoff game, pal. Like, ridiculous. I know, but don't discount his success that he's had That's in the That's Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel. I, I agree. They can put a statue of him out there, but the statue for Dak, let's just wait here a minute. Now, I think they could be making the wrong mistake. I think they could be making a mistake. Romo, to me, may be a better throw. throw God, no. Tony I'm just Romo. Saying, is the most overrated player in the NFL. I don't know NFL. about that. I don't know. Tony Romo is garbage. He's the most injury-prone, he is injury softest prone. quarterback yeah. in the league currently. Yeah. Dak Prescott is your quarterback going forward in I that organization. I just don't know what the, again, it's your thing with Garoppolo. Okay. Too. It's like the same thing. Like, relax, people. Relax, what, Dallas fans. What, has, what have Dallas, Dallas fans seen all their um, lives? Well, not Tony Romo failing. Yeah. They see a winner now. They see someone who can carry a game and carry I, I them. Will, I will not discount that. Yes, yeah. the kid is a winner. Yeah. I will not take that away. Skill-wise. Certainly he doesn't match up they, to a Russell that, that's Wilson. That's what I'm trying to get yeah. off. Like Skill-wise winning, he doesn't match yeah, up to you, you Russell ride Wilson. Or, he, he's or, a winner. Yeah. But his number, it, let's not discount the numbers here. Black and white, looking at it in front of you, he, he's no Tom Brady. Agreed. Nobody is Tom Brady, but no I'm, I'm just yeah. saying. If they play them, I, it would be a great game. So, do I'd you, love to you see think it. Dallas? I'd love to see Dallas. Okay. Do you have a different opponent? I think Dallas would be a safe pick, but I, I think back to the back to the Dak Prescott. Um, you know, I think he's going to get there, and he's going to be like, "Oh, what do I do? This is the big show. I don't know how to." He, I, yeah. he hasn't been there. Too many he nerves. doesn't know what to do, and I yeah. think that the nerves are going to come in, and that it's going to be a, a huge mind game for mm. them more than a physical game. No. I'm scared of the Giants. I'm sorry. I, I just, they've been able to beat Dallas twice. It's just that team. <laughs> if the Patriots face against the Giants, we're in trouble. No matter where it is, it doesn't. I would hate that. That would just be awful. Because you know how things certainly usually happen in threes. Right. That, that, might, that might happen. That would be terrible. That would just be awful. We will see where the Patriots seasons go, though. Hopefully it's a victory. Hopefully another Super Bowl, but... Based on my prediction, if that Super Bowl comes, Tom Brady could be on his way back to his house and enjoying retirement. Whatever. Let's change gears here. That was our football segment. We want to get into a couple other things here, too. Um, I want to look at high school sports, though, first, if that's okay with you yep. guys. Winter season's here for both Reading and for North Reading. I want to take a look at some highlights, some of the games that are upcoming for both the boys and the girls. Um, speaking for you guys as seniors at Reading High School, what's the buzz around school? What's the team that's supposed to be like really good this this winter? Um, I mean, there's a few, maybe there's not. Both basketball teams should be pretty good. Yeah, both okay. hockey teams sh- should be pretty good. Okay. Hockey team, uh, starting with the boys first and then the girls. Uh, they have the return of both Tobin brothers. Um, mm-hmm. Although Matt Thompson has left to go play juniors, mm-hmm. Sean Dynan has left their starting goalie. Um, Devin Brzezzi, their backup goalie, left. So now starting in net for the Rockets will be Matt Coughlin, who transferred back um, to Reading Public Schools from St. John's um, after playing up there. So they should be decent. However, I think the girls' hockey team might post a better record uh, than the boys this year. They have Michaela Boyle back from playing for uh, the Shamrocks, um, and she's going to play her final season um, eligible as a senior to play in a rocket uniform and she should be a great um, mm-hmm. force for them um, hell of a hockey player and especially losing um, Allie two years ago yeah. and Caroline Siebold and Tori Grimmer last year the Rockets are going to need that kind of leadership uh, in the locker room they're a very young team they've they're very youthful and they're very good and very mm-hmm. quick but yep. they need that leadership and I'm glad kind of Michaela will be there to maybe uh, lead the Rockets uh, for the girls hockey team Super fan Dave. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, both of Chris's points. I think that 
Uh, you know, it, it's looking like the girls may do uh, a, a little bit better, but yeah, I could be totally wrong. Um, but I think you never want to be wrong on here. I forgot <laughs> to tell you that point. Never <laughs> be wrong. Disclaimers. Yes. Yeah. Um, forgot you know. to give him that waiver to sign before he came in. <laughs> I think Carry that, on. I think that the uh, you know the boys hockey has a. I think they have a very uh, promising uh, first line. Um, you know, like you said, the Tobin brothers. Um, you Jay know, Gallagher. Yeah, and I think that they have a lot of depth to their team as they well do. as the girls. The boys hockey team took on a huge squad this year uh, for whatever reason. Oh yeah. Uh, Mr. Doherty has uh, thought through his mind. It's a pretty big squad this year. It should be interesting to see uh, how they all play, how they all mesh together. Um, all the power to them. I hope both the teams, both the girls and boys hockey team, do well. Mm-hmm. Um, then switching gears to the basketball program at Reading High. Mm-hmm. Um, the girls basketball team, honestly, under the direction of uh, Mr. Benedictus, they've got a great roster on paper. Um, Sarah Dudinsky, Katie Nestor, Haley Lightbody, Callie Doherty, mm-hmm. Julian McGurn. They're very good. They pay you to say their names? Yes. I just want to make <laughs> yeah. sure. $5 Shout each. Out. I get a royalty. $5 <laughs> each. They should be pretty good, honestly. Uh, I got some good lines tonight. I'm feeling good about that. Go ahead. <laughs> Never mind. Go, go. And then for the boys uh, ho- uh, basketball team, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, boy, boys basketball, I think. Now, here, I think this is the question what, what we're all asking is that why, why can't they, they win games? I think you look at their roster. You got Corey DiLoretto. You got Eric D'Agostino. You got um, Joe, Bradley. Well, Joe Bradley. A lot of the football players play basketball as well. Yeah, so, you know, they're this quick, they're this quick team. They've got, I think they've got a lot of energy, and it's just the question I think is why can't they win games? Why... Haven't they been successful? Don't go there. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> they both, all teams this winter, on paper, are very good. Uh-huh. Very good. It should be very interesting to see why teams are successful. And if they're not successful, like maybe one or two of them may be, mm-hmm. why? Let's look at the reasons. And I think uh, maybe at the end of the season, Mr. Zaya might have to make some decisions. We'll, keep, we'll make sure we don't talk about those on air, though. How would that be? No, I'm just kidding. Um, obviously, it's important to make sure that you do have a good team and you have a good leader atop there with coaching in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in, the, long, in the long run there. Um, I do know that the boys' basketball program did lose one of the uh, best, in my opinion, JV coaches, assistants at Dwayne yeah, Sigsbury. Dwayne Sigsbury went he up to Bill Ricca. He is going to be the Bill Ricca head coach. That is a enormous yeah. loss. And the kids spe- spoke so highly of Mr. Sigsbury as yeah. a coach and just kind of a mentor my, in, my, in the locker, in my eyes, leadership. And, and I don't know if Dwayne will watch this at all, but he is the best high school coach in Massachusetts. That's well, a bold statement I'll make. But for motivation, for getting the best out of kids, for being that role model and that central figure on getting the most out of your athletes, Dwayne Sigsbury is the best. Yeah. He's a great guy, too. Yep, great guy. Um, we look forward to all of the winter sports. Um, for North Reading on the next episode of Face the Facts, we will have um, Mel Webster be able to join us. He'll give us a little bit of a recap on how North Reading is looking for the winter. And that'll be very exciting to hear from their side of things, too. So we wish both Reading and North Reading a very solid and successful winter sports season. Changing gears to the Boston Bruins and the Celtics. We're going to go over them pretty quickly because we only have a short amount of time left here on Face the Facts. But overall with the Celtics, I have to say that I'm pretty disappointed in what I'm yep. seeing from this team right now. Yeah. It's, I mean, I have a lot of faith in Brad Stevens, their head coach. I've liked him since he was down at, uh, I believe, Butler. Um, or Gonzaga. No, Butler. Uh, he was at Butler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a hell of a coach. Danny Ainge, my God, make some decisions that will, He's benef- a train wreck. will benefit your organization. He's Al a train Horford, wreck. like, what a bust out that's been thus far. I know it's very early to get on someone's case. but if Everybody, you're gonna, if you talk to if, the green teamers. If you're going to be the face of your organization like Al Horford should be, or Isaiah is, but now Isaiah's injured. He's and soft. Coming back. Isaiah thinks he's a lot, Isaiah thinks he's a lot more... Um, Star. Important yeah. and like an elite a player star. in the league. Buddy, you're done Good in about number six. a year or two. Yeah. He's your sixth man. He should yeah. not be your star player, starting no. point guard. Um, make a decision. They need someone to help them out. 
I would absolutely love DeMarcus Cousins here as a Celtic. They should have got oh, him, what, yeah. two years love ago? Love it. Two years ago, I was I saying that. I don't care if they say he's the toughest person in the world we to need coach. need a tough guy. Make it happen. you got a bunch of soft yeah. nobodies on your roster. We've been going to Celtics games for a while, and it's just soft. It's a disappointment. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, first of all, that I think part of the reason why the Celtics are a little bit different than this year we very, we very much discounted the fact that Evan Turner is no longer a Celtic yeah, and he's a good player. Jared Sullinger, good player. two I didn't huge like, guys I didn't like on Sullinger. the defensive side of the ball. I, don't, I didn't, wasn't as much of a fan of Sullinger at all, yeah. but the impact without him on this team, it hurts. And the, it the hurts. Im, the impact, this team can't win a big game to save their life. The impact is just rebounding. They Turner, can't. Turner and Sullinger were your yeah. top rebounders last yeah. year. The defensive rebound, Kelly Oletic going up flopping. He is. He's get rid of him. He's garbage. Send him back to Ireland and chop his hair off. Just <laughs> Tyler Zeller. Like a goon. Tyler Zeller is far Be better than him. Be an NBA professional. Sorry, I had to. I know. Answer. I know. Tyler Zeller is far better than him, and they're just so soft. They can't rebound for the life of them, and it's just it's so sad. They need someone to help them out. I don't know who that is. If it's Cousins, but someone. Oh, Cousins. That would that would just be wonderful. Go ahead. No, I think Cousins would would add so much to their team. They, they need a tough guy. They need someone who's going to take control and, you know, lay one out or just even, you know, take a hard foul. They're, the Celtics are so afraid to make plays on defense because they're afraid that they're going to they're gonna reach in or they're going to get a foul. And we're, I'm so sorry that stop. we have to mention it, because, but Avery Bradley is, I think, one of the stronger players on the team. I do like him for the most part. I think he's tough. Great defensive player, you were going to say? I was just going to say another soft team in Boston. It might Right now it might be the Bruins. They too. are. The, it is the Bruins. This team, I think, is just in so much trouble right now. I think they're the worst out of the four just because they have no availability to get a good player right now. Their re- roster is shot. They're recalling from Providence like two times a week. Yeah. Any team who's doing that uh, for any sport, you're recalling from your minors multiple times throughout the week, yeah. says you have a – some internal problems and issues that you can't maintain a roster. And B, something in that locker room might be going on uh, with players getting along. I don't think it's just injuries. Uh, But they need – they've been saying for years, Pasternak might be your new goal scorer, -hmm. goal scorer, but they need a defenseman. My God. David Backus, he's good, he's physical, but he's not a true, true defenseman. When they they traded away – um, Dougie Hamilton, that was a huge loss. Yep. And then they put all their faith in Tory Krug, another not true defenseman. How come every single time that we talk about the Bruins, we always talk about players that we had, Tyler Sagan, Dougie Hamilton? Because it's the front office. Dom Sweeney, yes, Dom Sweeney does not yeah. essentially know what he's doing, yeah. I guess. He's got a lot of... It's not uh, his fault, though. I know. It started with Peter Shirelli. It starts with the Jacobs. That's Jeremy and Charlie. his sidekick puppet father, Charlie <laughs> Jacobs. And then it starts with Cam Neely. Cam Neely is loved around here as a player for being uh, a Boston Bruin for as long as he was. Heart of, you know, heart is black and gold, absolutely. When it comes to managing, you need, you, she should be fired. I'm, yeah. I'm done with Cam Neely. Cam Neely has wrecked this team. Yeah. Wrecked it. To the point where they can't fix it, really. The you only, got Krejci signed long-term. The only reason they won in 2011 was because of Tim Thomas and Mark Recchi. Two yeah. players. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And that point was said last night. I was over talking with a couple other people. I said the same point. Without Tim Thomas, 2011, it was a fluke. Yeah. So we got real lucky that there was a Stanley Cup right there. Outside of that, I mean, Bruins are in a bad problem right now and they got to figure it out quickly that's sad because they don't have really anybody down below who's going to be coming up shortly i'll be going to the game on sunday and just i I went to a couple this year and they just look soft going up and seeing umass lowell play is more entertaining and more (laughs) i mean they're a good team or don't discount them i mean but in in in, even harvard they've got a good great squad they beat bc a couple times college hockey around boston is far more better entertaining um Honestly, more for your dollar. Tickets are like five, ten bucks to see these college kids they play. They pay you two to? Yeah. Before the show? Yeah. <laughs> Looking for sponsors, just in case you look, you know. Um, outside of the Bruins, we want to finish up the show with a pretty cool segment we usually do right around the holidays each year. It's our Christmas wish list. And we look at the four of the Boston sports teams in the area, the Red Sox, Patriots, Bruins, and Celtics. 
and we think of a gift that we think each of these teams could need. I'm sure that all of you have your own gifts that you'd like to give them, but these are our <laughs> gifts that we feel are best for them. So without further ado, let's look at the Red Sox first, because we didn't talk about them at all in the oh, show. Well, yeah. So I want to ask David, David, if, if you were going to give a gift to the Boston Red Sox, what would it be? Uh, I, th I think I would give them the, the confidence that now, I think that the extra confidence that they have now with that, the huge deal that just went on. And I think that they've been described as now the Golden State Warriors of baseball. Oh, don't the listen to Brian Cashman. Oh, all right. He's the last person in the world that should be having you know, an opinion on the Red I, Sox. I, I think that they're going to be outstanding this year, and that's you know that's just based off of the numbers and based off of their players. But yep. I think a gift that I want to give them is just you know you guys can do it. Give them a confidence booster. Yep. You can do it. <laughs> and that confidence booster is a coach. That's who they need. <laughs> okay. John Farrell is point. not a coach. Yeah, yeah. he's he god awful. He's a pitching coach. Okay. Like, and I'm not I'm not discounting pitching coaches and saying that's coach. like they need they a head one, coach. Larry Lavulo. Yeah, bye bye. And now we got great pitchers. So. Yeah, but I mean like that he can wreck. Yes, if Chris Sale is wrecked this season, it's which I fair. God hope he's not, John Farrell needs to go. Sure does. And sure does. I don't know who the heck you're gonna get as a head coach. They were even talking about Jason Veritek might coming back. He as should a be bench he should coach. be groomed as a bench coach very shortly. So Jason Veritek would. Be Honestly, want to be one of the most interesting coaches to watch yeah. in the league if he did sweet. come into the. I would love to see league. that happen. I really would. He'd be great. They're gonna love my thing. I'm gonna put on my Christmas list. Do you have it, any idea? A cheaper hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. Um, what do you think it is? Um, Victor Martinez. No, it's actually to give David Ortiz some better feet so he can play longer. <laughs> I'm Nick never going to let so you live wrong. this down until, and still, I'm going to say it until May and June because he has to sit out until for 60 days at the beginning of the season because he filed his retirement papers. So when the All-Star oh, break comes along, this point is still going to be living on. Done. Okay. I won't, be, I, won't be on the I won't be on the show until next August because I don't want to listen to Get me. a phone He's call done. August 1st. Chris, don't you love that trade deadline pickup? There's Ortiz no way is that back. Ortiz comes out of his house. Oh, I'm back. Yep. <laughs> and just grabs his bat, not a chance. And Manny comes out of the door. Hey, man. Yeah, I would love that. Manny's my favorite player that's ever walked through the Manny's Red Manny's up for the Hall of Fame in, Jill in January. Really? Yeah. Do you vote oh. him in? Uh, uh, Three P PEDs. Yeah. That's the only minus. Women fertility. Minus, drugs. minus, minus. Yeah. I don't know. Manny I'm not a big Manny. fan of performance enhancers for major leagues. So that was my gift. I give David Ortiz new feet so he can come out and play another season and win a ring which could very well happen with the roster that's assembled. Um, let's go to the Patriots. What's the gift that you give? I, I give them the Super Bowl. I, Ooh, I think okay. that they, I think that they've proven themselves this year that, you know, okay, well, um, there's been some okay teams, but I think the Patriots have really stood out like they have every year. And I think that, you know what? I think now Brady becoming uh, officially – the GOAT, even though we all know he, he has been. But, you know, I think that he deserves that, and I think the whole organization uh, deserves that as well. I'm going to gift the Patriots organization equality. It's a very oh, broad gift. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gifting them equality because I think that they... <laughs> Nick has fallen asleep over here. Roger Goodell and the NFL have not been fair to them yeah. at all. Other fans in the league have not been fair to the Patriots at all. Some fans in New England have attacked Tom Brady. They need to be on the same playing field and seen with the same eyes as any other team and player in the NFL um, is seen with. They're winners, and they should be seen as winners. Not, yeah. not, not cheaters. cheaters. Not cheaters, yeah. yeah. I respect that. Um, They're going to open up equality on Christmas Day. I'm debating on what I want to do. I'm trying to debate what is funnier that could come out of my mouth when I say it. So I think I'm going to say I'd like to give Tom Brady a ring so he can shove it right down Roger Goodell's you-know-what. Yep. Um, or a key. That key could be to a jail cell so Goodell could be <laughs> locked up there and rot away. Overall, my feeling is that whatever, way, whatever it's going to take for Tom Brady to get that next Super Bowl, 
is exactly what I would give Tom Brady. So I te technically kind of agree with you, David. I would give Tom Brady the Super Bowl yep. as well. The Bruins, oh boy. There's too many, too many things that we want to give them. Um, is there one particular gift you might want to give the Bruins? Maybe a, a restart. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe a rewind back on the Move guys that they Vegas. had. <laughs> What'd you give? I mean, I don't even know what to say at this point. It's kind of been a disappointment. They needed a but new front it, office. It's yeah. clear they oh, need yeah. a lot of gifts in the front office. Yeah. Front Starting office probably staff. with like an administrative secretary. Mm. Starting with that, and you then, have one of those, don't you? <laughs> I do. Oh. Get bye bye. Cam Neely, yeah. bye-bye, Dom Sweeney, okay. bye-bye, Claude Julien. Yeah. Restart it up. Restart, yeah. redial. Gonna, I have no thought you're not going to see the Bruins. the Bruins be winning uh, Stanley Cup for about at least five years, in my opinion. I think it's longer, honestly, to tell you the truth. Um, I give them a reset. You know that button down? Oh, that's the easy button, not that one. No, just a reset. I was going to think of the, re the button at Staples, but they're not a, that's not a sponsor, so they should not get a mention here. Um, <laughs> I give him a reset. The reset should be on Tyler Sagan. It should be on Dougie Hamilton. It should be on all the guys that have parted ways and the Bruins have ended up getting screwed from. Mm -hmm. So I do a reset so the team can get a fresh start and get the players back that they technically should still mm -hmm. have. Um, stupidity from the management of the Bruins is the reason why they're terrible right now. Yep. Not terrible, but not as good as they should be. Celtics. All the Celtics need is just a star player like DeMarcus Cousins. Cousins. Someone who's going to bring Cousins. their organization Cousins. Cousins. Yep. Uh, some recognition, um, some winning games. Brad Stevens is How about fine. locking up Danny Ainge? No, God, no, no it's fine. No. I mean, Danny Ainge has made some very stupid mistakes. However, yeah. you need a player. Um, you need like a big three. You need yeah. someone else. You're not going to do it with the roster you have currently. Coaching staff led by Stevens now is fine. Front office is okay. Uh, but I just, just think Danny Ainge needs to make a move. He needs to make up his mind. Yeah, Let's make, make a blockbuster. A make Enough a blockbuster. Enough with the picks. Get, you get the picks to trade away to get a star. You I need mean, a star here. The you Cubs, need a Garnett, a Pierce, an Allen, something like that. Yeah. I mean, Theo Epstein promised his little Cubbies fans how if he gave them a few years. He did it. He, he would do it. Danny Ainge has made no promises to us. Nope. So and he's been here since 2000. Very little to believe from Enough. Him. Enough with Danny Ainge. Any other points on Face the Facts this evening? I don't know. It's been a very We faced heated, all of them, I think. Yeah, very heated, very uh, entertaining dialogue. show. Very entertaining. Outside of that, I hope all of you have a wonderful holiday season. I know for David and Chris, I want to thank you guys for being here on Face the Facts. We hope you're here again very soon. For Nick Face, we hope you have a happy holidays, and we will see you soon on another episode of Face the Facts. Have a good night.